Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Today's a new week, and that means we got a new theme, and this theme's week is... I said that backwards. It is Brian's favorites. I have come to enjoy quite a few bands over the last six or seven months that the channel's been open, and I selected ten of them that I'd like to revisit, and my Patreons voted on those ten and picked out five. So, that's what we're doing. Today starts out with Igor, and I really enjoyed this band last time, even though they're like super weird avant-garde stuff. I don't know, it's just right up my alley. There wasn't really any specific song that was kind of dominating in the requests, but uh, Down... Down... What is this one? Downgrade Desert was definitely one of the ones requested, and when I checked out that thumbnail, the guy had like this cyberpunk post-apocalyptic visor. I picked it because of that. Seriously, I'm not even kidding. I picked it off of a thumbnail because of eyewear. So, yeah. Let's, um... Let's get into this Igor stuff. Yeah. Those chord qualities are beautiful. I'm also hearing, those are those visors. I'm also hearing some notes that are outside of like Western music. Because our 13 notes are very sparse compared to a lot of other uh, cultures music, except China. I think ancient China only had five notes, if I'm remembering my um, my musical history right. But yeah, Western music's 13 notes is actually very sparse. Not where I thought this song was going at all. That weird swell going on on the first beat in the guitar. I'm kind of digging it. Okay, interesting place to put like a choir sting. Not even a stink, it's like a short note. Her air control is phenomenal. So far though, this is not as weird as that other one they had. Okay. Yeah. Not only do I love the texture mixture between the two vocals, but just it's a little bit of counterpoint, but also the lower vocals were more uh, rhythmic, so it's still just really cool the way that they uh, they layered all that. Oh, 
Oh man. All right. Yeah, in that previous section though, the drums were playing triplets against everybody else playing, um, you know, straight quarters, uh, and it really gives it a, a strange feeling of time. Oh, that's... I felt kind of bad talking over that part, but that was the outro, outro so now I, I definitely feel bad talking over that. That's my fault. Oh, should not hit that again. Alright, so... Yeah, I feel... I feel washed out. I feel very pale. I don't know. Um, so yeah, that is not what I was expecting at all. Um, coming from EUD, I think it was what the other one was called, I-E-U-D, but the D was capitalized and it was back, I don't know. Um, I was expecting another like hyper avant-garde thing, just like totally out there. And this was very mainstream. I mean, you definitely still had some of what I would say is part of their DNA in the song. We have the clashing between, like, metal and opera and, uh, you know, multiple vocal layers being, being well, multiple vocal textures being layered. Um, but musically, compositionally... It was actually fairly straightforward. We had uh, a couple of jarring transitions between the opening. Um, that was not a guitar, like the opening stringed instrument. It was very cool. I want to touch on this for a second. I mentioned that I'm fairly certain I was hearing notes that don't exist in uh, Western music. And we have 13 notes. Let me double check that because I've said that number a lot. We have 12 notes. Yeah, dang, I don't know why I said 13. We have 12 notes. Um, and I really hope people are listening this far instead of just calling me out right when I said 13 because I feel like I'm going to get a lot of comments because I said that earlier and didn't correct myself until like seven minutes later. Um, yeah, we have 12 notes though. And, but these notes are kind of randomly picked um, there are a bajillion notes that exist. I mean, basically every time we, we measure, um, wavelengths, sound wavelengths, uh, in cents. And you can actually, the difference between like a C and a C sharp is quite a few cents. Um, I, I, don't know the number off the top of my head. I want to say like a hundred something, but dang, I really need a refresher on this. Um, this is like the science behind music. Um, but yeah, so there's like, if hypothetically my hundred, if it's, I think it's about a hundred hypothetically though, that would mean that there's a hundred notes between C and C sharp. But as far as Western music is concerned, there is no note between C and C sharp. Um, so other instruments or other cultures who uh, created music outside of the influence of Western music actually ended up creating a lot of notes or a few. Like I mentioned, I'm fairly certain that China only had like five or seven ancient China. Um, some of their earlier works of music were really comprised of very few notes. Um, I think it was like five or seven, something like that. Uh, they had much wider gaps um, in their in their note selection as far as, you know, scents are, are concerned. Um, so, yeah, the beginning of this music was not created with the Western uh, idea of notes. Um, I'm, I'm, like, fairly certain on that part. There were a couple of notes that sounded outside of you know, what we consider to be notes in Western music. So that's really cool. We don't get to hear that very often. Um, you you can really do it 
on string on almost any stringed instrument we have um, the frets on guitars but you don't have to obey the frets as long as you play a note between the frets you're gonna find another note um, and that's pretty much if you checked out that instrument he was playing on at the beginning of the video there are no frets on there which is how usually how it's easier to find these you know middle notes um, but yeah, you, most of the time you'll end up looking at um, other instruments to find these, like sitars. A lot of bands will bring in a sitar when they want to get that that specific sound because a sitar is designed to be played with all these extra notes in mind, or these middle notes, these in-between notes as far as Western music is concerned. Um, so yeah, I, I love how they can take all these little ideas and kind of bring them into metal music i think that's what igor does best and i i kind of assumed that their art house avant-garde idea from the first time we checked them out i, f I really thought the dna of the band was going to be something along the lines of um the unexpected you know they have those wild transitions they have the operatic sections they have you know random screaming with like heavy drums behind them um, like you could never really understand what was going to come next unless you had heard the song before and i'm wondering if maybe that was just that period of time that era of the band igor or the group i think it is a one-man project and he he brings on other people i'm not sure if he is a solo composer or not um but i know that stuff was from three years ago and this stuff was from three months ago so it could just be a change in his compositional ideology and how maybe he's evolved as a composer. Um, or, you know, either one of these could have been one-offs. Who knows? But the idea I got from them was that they were wild with compositional theory and that they would basically just do whatever they wanted, whether it was compositionally sound or not. And this song kind of flips that entire idea of them that I had upside down. It was very accessible um, and mainstream. It, it had a sort of... It wasn't a strict like A, B, A, B, C, B kind of, kind of songwriting technique where you got your verse, chorus, verse, chorus. But it also wasn't extremely chaotic and there was a very defined core going throughout the majority of the track um the guitar riffs the um chord progressions the drumming uh a lot of the parts are held together and sound similar they sound like they all belong to the same song and that is to start contrast to the last time we checked out igor so i think it's always really cool to see not necessarily the extremes of an artist or a composer or a musician, but definitely seeing how they can perform in two different settings. Because uh, this is, I mean, like I said, there's still some core ideas in here where they're utilizing ideas outside of metal, incorporating it with met metal ideas. Um, that idea, that, that core concept is still present. It's, it's present in both of these tracks. Uh, merging the operatic singing with the heavier metal is still present in both of these tracks but the chaotic nature of eud i think that's how you say it is not present in here and i think that's really cool to see a more melodic more mainstream more structured maybe we'll get rid of the word mainstream a, a melodic structured song com compared to you know the other track we checked out where it was just pure chaos so yeah, this definitely increases my appreciation for them. Um, I kind of had them pegged as this weird art house thing, and I see that they can actually still keep a lot of what I think is core to their identity as musicians um, and still write something that's completely on the on a different scale, different different side of the, the spectrum from what I've I've been introduced to them before. So yeah. This is where you guys come in, though. I've told you what I thought. You need to tell me what you think. Is there anything else by Igor I should check out? Is this the two ends of their spectrum? Um, 
and is there anything in between that kind of merges the two? Because I do kind of miss a little bit of the chaos. Uh, we saw a little bit of that here, but this was just such a structured version of Igor. And I wonder if maybe there's something in the middle, somewhere between Downgrade Desert and Eud. I feel like those are the two ends of the spectrum, just like pure chaos and then mostly pure structure. There's got to be something in the middle, I think, that kind of merges these two versions of the band that I think I would really enjoy. Um, also, let me know if you enjoyed this song, if you didn't enjoy this song, if you prefer this over their other one, or maybe you prefer their other side over this. You know, hit me up in the comments, let me know while you're down there. You can like, subscribe, and ring the bell. All three of those things help out the channel immensely. And you can also check out my Twitter and my Patreon. Those links are in the description if you're interested in either of those. I will be back tomorrow with the next episode of this week's theme of Brian Recom no, Brian's Favorites. I think that's what it's called. I don't know. It's been a long day, I think. <laughs> I can't even remember the name of the theme. And I just said it like 10 minutes ago. Um... So yeah, I'll be back tomorrow with that, same time as usual, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. And until then, you guys stay safe out there and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.